Welcome, everybody. This is a, a wonderful opportunity for us to talk about something which I know is very important to various of us because of the fact that we're trying to get the word out about what we've understood, what we've learned. And so I congratulate all of you in considering doing that and encourage you to do it because it's important that we let the world know about the truths that we're discovering as we're discovering them because there's so many things that are happening so quickly now and we're the ones who can tell people about them. So being able to publish both in, in through the printed media and through the visual media is very important to what we're doing. So I'm very pleased to have everybody here today and uh, looking forward to making this a very informative time for us all. So we're going to start off with uh, Suzanne Wilson, who's going to speak about some of the pitfalls that you can run into with publishing. There are real pitfalls and you can't avoid them, uh, but you have to be attentive. You have to notice what they are and, and be aware of them and avoid them. Uh, I want to say something about uh, the process in general about offset publishing and using the, the bookstore, the book publishers and using CreateSpace. And then we're going to open it up to the others who have some knowledge about it. Uh, Joe Higgins is here. He has been doing some work with it. Suzanne Barnes has been doing some research uh, and uh, she will be sharing with us what it is that, that she has been learning in her process right now. Yeah. And Mary will be here and, and Mary is uh, a, with a background in publishing and a background in, in writing and she will be sharing with us what she will be helping us to understand about the process and about publishing. So this should be a very enlightening time. And so with that, then I wanna turn it over to Suzanne who is going to be speaking about some of the pitfalls and some of the things you need to watch out for in the process of choosing the methods by which you publish. Welcome everybody. I'm really glad that you're here. And to people who are watching this later as a recorded session, I hope that you will take note of everything that we offer in the way of advice here. And I hope that you will go forward and write your book. And if you have been collecting notes for years and years and years, like many people have, now is the time to put all of that together into a book so that you can share what you've learned about the greater reality and other people can look at your experience and identify with it and say, wow, I can relate to that and you will help raise the consciousness. You have a unique gift and your gift is who you are as a soul. A book is a wonderful way to share that. But so many times people are afraid to write a book because they just figure it's gonna be expensive to publish or I don't even know how to get it published and get it out there, or will people make fun of me because it's just a vanity project? And I'm here to tell you that whatever you do to express who you are as a soul is important to share with the world now more than ever before. There is a great shift in the consciousness taking place, and ARAI wants to support you as best we can in getting your story, your thoughts, your experiences, your research out into the world where it can be shared. So I spent many, many years collecting notes to put a book together, and I finally did. I had a person I thought was a friend who referred me to a wonderful publisher. There were amazing promises that were made. I'll have your book at all kinds of book fairs around the world. I'll get it into brick and mortar stores for you. Um, it's just gonna be an amazing process. I pay you quarterly royalties. I'll give you an accounting of all the books that you've sold. And fortunately for me, I wasn't asked for any money up front. I believe that this publisher knew that because I had a platform, there would be people buying the books. Well, I figured maybe 100 people would buy a book, and I was very surprised and pleased that the book was very warmly received. And um, I sold pretty good. The only problem with this whole process was that the royalty check that I received bounced. And then I kept hearing stories about, well, it will be replaced, and we'll get that out to you. Oh, the check came back in the mail. So you get the idea. I never received a penny. Now you're thinking, Suzanne, you're psychic. Didn't you know that you were getting involved with a fraud or a deceptive practice? And the thing is, I never stopped and gut checked it. 
I never stopped and talked to my guides. I was so enthusiastic and I was so excited, I just jumped in. But here's the real world. Most people that are getting ripped off by the so-called vanity publishers are paying money up front. And since I went public on Facebook about having been ripped off on my book, I didn't name any names and I can't name any names. Although that publisher, they've conveniently gone out of business and are doing business under a new name. So that's another thing that these um, deceptive practices companies do. As soon as they've built up so much debt and bounced so many checks, they will bankrupt the company, close it, and start under a new name and do the same thing. Well, I came clean that that happened to me and I wanted to warn people. I started receiving email from all over the world about people with similar stories, only much, much worse. Stories like, I paid $16,000 and I've never received a royalty. I've never received any books. $13,000, $22,000. So here's what I wanna tell you. There is great news in the fact that you've got a wonderful resource, an amazing panel here to help you today to get your story out to the world, to write your book and publish it. And you can do it yourself. And believe me, after what I've been through and the stories that are much, much worse that I've been hearing, this is the way to go, folks, is to do it yourself. You can do it. I even spoke with um, a man in his 80s who had published several books with one of these fraudulent um, companies and he has never received an accounting for how many books he's received. He was promised a big a radio interview on a huge radio show that was canceled and rescheduled about five times. And I asked him, look, I'll help you get the rights to your book back if you want. And what he said to me was, um, I'm very ill and I don't want to fight and I don't want to spend my last few days fighting. Well, I don't blame him, and that broke my heart. I want to save you from having to go through something similar like this. So here's a few red flags. First, there's something called the, the publisher's lunch. And even if you Google that, I haven't done that. I imagine you'll find that it will speak to deceptive practices. You will be promised the sun, moon, and the stars. And for me, I didn't care about all of that. I just went on a recommendation from a friend with a publisher. But if something is too good to be true in publishing, a promise is too good to be true, guess what? <laughs> it's not real. There is something else called asking you to partner with a publisher. We're partnership publishers. Uh -uh -uh. That just means they're gonna ask you for a big fat check. You should never pay one penny to any publishing house to get your book published. That's not the way it works. There's no such thing as partnership publishing. It's a scam. Now, I'm, I'm sure somebody's going to email me and say, my cousin has a partnership publishing and they pay their bills. Da, 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 da. There's always an exception to a rule. I'm going to go with the 99%. If you Google publishing scams, you're going to find them in pretty much every country in the world. So, don't pay up front. And here's the next one. If someone contacts you and solicits you for a book, BS, that doesn't happen. The only people that get contacted about writing books are people who are in the media, in the mainstream. And then they have an agent that negotiates those sorts of things. So be very, very careful if someone reaches out and says, I really love where you're coming from and I want to publish your book. Don't want to do that at all. Now, what happens if you've already been ripped off? What happens um, if there's somebody listening to this on the replay or here live? Do not be ashamed. If it can happen to me, it can happen to you. No, I didn't pay any money up front, but that's just a different variation of this scam. So there are some legal remedies that you can pursue. So this is SFWA, uh, a writer's uh, website, and this has, this is the most comprehensive legal recourse list of things that you can do that I have yet seen. And it even tells you what 
to prepare if you are going to go and get legal advice. It says don't try to play library lawyer uh, and do this yourself because the rules about um, fraud and its cousin, deceptive practice, uh, can vary from country to country and state to state. But if you have already been ripped off, and judging from the literally almost 100 emails I've received, some of you listening have, um, you'll need the name and mailing address of the main party uh, who defrauded you, an estimate of the amount of money you believe you've lost, a list of the dates you had contact, agreed to any services. You want every single email you've ever had, how you first learned of the potential defendant's services, the general nature of the suspected fraud, like lied to me about agent publishing editorial service, bounce checks, checks written on long ago closed bank accounts. Um, other remedies, guess what? In the US, because checks go through the mail, there could even be a mail fraud element to this. So you want to get the rights to your book back so that you can publish it yourself. You would have to get a new cover, a new ISBN number, and all these other things. But look at this Internet Crime Complaint Center. If you were um, catfished, for lack of a better term, you know, where they send you an email saying, we love you, we want to publish your book. There are so many things that you can do. Um, be very careful not to name the company publicly or anyone with the company, even though it's a fact that they defrauded you, because con artists are a litigious lot. They really want to cause you pain, and they will throw red herrings at you, right? There's tracking numbers for these kinds of things. They, will, they don't care how outrageous the lies are to you, just as long as it stalls you off, gets you upset, makes you think this is just too negative, I don't want to be involved, and then you give up. But they're using your royalties to pay their bills, and it's not fair. So I hope that I've made a case for um, self-publishing. We are so honored to have top experts here, Susan Barnes, Joe Higgins, Mary Holden, and Craig Hogan, who has published many books. Um, and what I would like to see happen here today is if you have questions, um, if you can put them in chat or make a note of them, that we save hopefully our last 20 minutes or so for your questions. But now I'm going to give it back to Craig so that we can hear from all these wonderful experts. And I want you to know that how I came to terms with this betrayal was, first off, I realized I just jumped in without assessing things. And so that's on me. But secondly, here's the blessing. We're having this meeting today, mainly because of this happening to me. I think it would have been on our radar a year out or two years out or who knows when. But now it, I felt an urgent need based on uh, what happened, all the emails I've received, um, and the fact that we need these healing books that all of you are writing. So our intention today is that this session is hopeful, helpful, and healing. Now all the negative stuff that has to be dealt with has been. So I'm gonna send you back to Craig now um, for the panel. Formative, and I'm sure that, that many of you will have questions for her. We're gonna have questions at the end. So what we're gonna do is go through each of the presentations and to make sure that we get them all in, but uh, hold your questions. Uh, if you have a question, you can put uh, the question in the uh, chat room, uh, so far on the right side, the Zoom room chat. Uh, or you can put a question mark in this just to let uh, Karen know that you have a question and she will then bring you on and let you ask the question. And we'll do that at the end of the, of the process. I wanted to say something about uh, the process of publishing. I've published 12 books and uh, I've gone through the whole process. So I actually went from having a book published by a publisher, which I got, we got an agent and we went through that whole process. And then we also had books published by a book, book publishing house, and I'll tell you what that is. And then we went straight to the printer and had them offset printed. That's a, another method. And then finally, I'm using CreateSpace now, and it's a godsend. It's a gift from God. And I want to tell you about that because that's what you need to use. You don't need to invest a penny in it. So uh, the process that, that I went through with uh, having to, when you go to a publisher, when you want to go to a big publisher, most of the big publishers won't talk to you. 
they'll only accept proposals from an agent. So you have to go to an agent, and the agent's going to call, charge you 20 to 30 percent, something like that, uh, depending on how what kind of an agent it is, uh, of everything that comes out of the book, all of the royalties that come out of it, all of the movie rights, everything that ever comes out of that book. Uh, and you can get some that are as low as 10 percent, but uh, most of them are, are higher than that. And you're going to run into problems with the, the con with the uh, these people who are agents for you. Uh, it was a, a bad experience for me. We didn't enjoy it. We finally ended up getting a publisher on our own through the connections that the agent had made. So we gave up on that. Uh, I wouldn't do that again. So what I, I went to did after that was to go to a book publishing house. Now, book publishing house, uh, the one that I used was called Book Batch. And what happens is that you pay them to print the book and to get it to you, and it's offset printed, which means that it costs more money to print than what is create space that I'll tell you about in a while. But offset print means that it's printed, it goes through a printing press, it has ink that comes onto the pages, and, and that process then you have to end up buying two or 3,000 books, and so you have to pay for them all up front, and it's usually gonna be around five bucks a book uh, for the average size book. And so that becomes very expensive. And then you got a, whole, a living room full of, of these books that you have to sell that are in, in boxes. And you have to go down to the post office and you have to print and send them out. It's just a, a mess. But I've gone through that and, and that was okay, except that it created problems for me because of the fact that the book publisher, uh, which was uh, Book Patch, took a, a sizable portion off the top. And so then they were getting that. But I didn't have to pay like 10 or 12,000. It was only in the range of seven or 8,000. So then after that, then I went to the printer myself. So I went to the offset printer and that means that the pages were going through the printing press. They were getting all this good ink on them. The photographs were coming out beautiful, beautifully. And uh, once I had done that, then I had still had a living room full of books, boxes of books, I had to send them out myself. But uh, at least I had reduced the cost. Finally, then uh, Amazon.com and CreateSpace, a company called CreateSpace, have made an arrangement with each other. CreateSpace then will work with the publishers, work with you, and they will take your manuscript in an Acrobat file, just a PDF file, and they will publish your manuscript. It costs you nothing. You don't have to pay a red cent. They will publish it and get it all over to Amazon. Amazon will put it online. They'll send it around to the libraries. They'll do the distribution of it. They'll take care of everything. And all you have to do is wait for the money to appear in your bank account. So CreateSpace is a wonderful opportunity. Uh, I can't tell you all of the procedures in the CreateSpace now because we have a short amount of time. But we put a link on the afterlifeinstitute.org website for you. And we're going to put all this information on there. And you can go to that when you're ready to publish. You can look up CreateSpace there, and it will give you some in information about CreateSpace and about these other options. So go to afterlifeinstitute.org. On the first page, you'll see a series of questions. And one of the questions is, how do I publish my book? And just click on that, and it'll take you to the information when you're ready to use it. So CreateSpace is the wonderful opportunity that you can use to, to publish your own books. It uses what's called print on demand. And what that means is that when they get an order through Amazon.com, then they send it to the printing house. They use what amounts to a photocopy process, but it's a very high quality photocopy process. And they then photocopy the book. They bind it. They put your, your cover on it that you've designed and sent to them. And then they send it out and uh, they cum accumulate the royalties and they just come to you every month in your bank account. So it's a wonderful opportunity. So I'm going to recommend that you use CreateSpace for your book publishing. And then if you want to, if you have a very high quality color book that you would like to have go out, CreateSpace also prints high quality uh, color books. So you can, it just costs you more in, in the uh, amount that you get. So what CreateSpace does is that they then will have a base charge that doesn't charge to you. It just comes out of whatever they sell the book for. And the base charge for a six by nine book with about 300 pages is going to be around $4.50. If you sell the book then for $19.15, that means you get a royalties of $15. Now, if you know anything about publishing, you know that, that you can get 20% as a high from a publisher, uh, but you're more likely to get 10 or 15%, something like that. So this is incredible. They sell the book throughout the world. 
they advertise the book on amazon.com they take care of everything for you so uh, we really recommend that that you investigate and use create space the only downside to it is if you have black and white photographs they may come out being a little bit grainy because of the fact that it's rather like a, a printing uh, rather like a xerox uh, so but it's worth it the photographs still look good and so that's the process that, that we recommend that you go through so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it over to the other speakers uh, and I, I want them to speak first and then we can accept any questions that you have after we're done with it. Uh, and if you have any questions about Create Space, then I can answer them then. Uh, so what I'd, I'd like to do is I, I'd like to uh, ask Susan if you would uh, speak about what you're finding out. Susan's involved in doing the research right now on books and she has some enlightening things to tell us. Craig, thank you very much for that. And I do have to give people a little bit of a, a background on me. First of all, I am the series editor for an academic press named Peter Lang Press, and I've been doing this for eight years at least, so I'm very familiar with the printing process. Um, and now what I've done is I'm shifting from an academic book into this afterlife work and what I decided to do was to publish my book with Lulu Press. And Lulu um, is another um, on-demand printer, and they've been around for a long time. They've been around at least 10 years, and they were one of the first ones to do this. Um, but because this topic came up with Suzanne, I decided to do an experiment. And I went on the internet, and I asked um, for, I did a search for find a publisher. And they did. They, they, I gave them a couple of parameters, like it was, a, it was a spiritual topic, blah, blah, blah. And they came up with suggestions on who should publish my book. And they came up with a Christian publisher named West Bow Press, uh, which was very interesting. Because West Bow, um, their packages start at $1,000 and, of course, go on up. And it's interesting that, you know, they have all the different things. They say they give you how many copies of the book and this, that, and the other thing. Um, and my question is always, how do they make their money? Well, they make their money on the fact that they get the royalties on the book. Um, you get paid for a, a $16 subcover book. Uh, you would get a dollar sixty, so it's a very small royalty payments that you get. I mean, these are like the royalty payments I'm used to in academia because I don't pay a cent to publish any of my academic books. They take care of the editing, they take care of the publishing, they take care of the whole thing. So basically, what these packages are doing is they're collecting two thousand dollars from you to help offset the publishing expenses and then um, they're taking most of the royalties. Now the catch to this, as I said, I've done publishing before, and the catch to, to a lot of this was, who does the editing? I mean, I'm, I know my flaws as a writer, and I do need an editor. So one of my key questions was, who does the editing? None of these packages include the editing. So the editing would cost me, it's, um, another couple thousand dollars just to get the book edited um, and up and I'm not sure how much more than that so the these packages that they say they're going to do things for you they really aren't doing that much for you at all now I have to say I have friends who have published with Balboa and they were happy with the results now, the way Balboa works is that Hay House, which is the big publisher in this area, you have to have an agent if you're gonna to go to them. And I can see with some of the other presses, you have to have an agent. Um, but with Balboa, what they do is, again, they charge you the same kind of package deal. Now, the interesting thing was that when I said to the Christian publisher, some Christians call us our work the devil, um, I don't know if it's appropriate for your press. She then told me that she could find me another press. 
And that Simon and & Schuster and, and all these big publishing firms are now doing this, where they charge you money to publish the books. Anyway, so with Balboa, they charge you money, but they also give you the carrot that if your book is successful, Hay House will pick it up. Now, I did question my friend about the prices, and she said they stuck to the prices for the basic price of the printing in the book. The book. However, they charged her $12,000 for publicity and did basically nothing. So they're going to get you one way or another with it. The best one that I found to submit to is Llewellyn Publishing. Their process is very similar to the academic process where you have to write a very complete book proposal and submit chapters of your book to them. And they were extremely great. I sent them all the information they requested because I am working on a book. And they got back to me within a week. The problem was that my book was similar to several other books they had published, so they did not want to publish mine. But they were very nice about it, and if I had another piece, I would submit to them again, you know, because it wasn't, it wasn't a problem doing it. And it's right on their website to tell you how you submit as an author. So now, Lulu, what I'm going to investigate, my next step for my investigation is with Lulu. Um, I did look on their site because I do want editing, and I found out the editing is going to cost me roughly close to $2,000 for it, um, but their fees for editing were less than the other companies, and they also have all kinds of services that you can pick and choose from. So if you just wanted to write the book and you, if you're really good with grammar and your English is great, you could just write the book, put it into a PDF format and um, format in their way, send it to them. And just like Craig said, you can have your book published for, for absolutely basically nothing. But you know, if you want some of these other services, um, you can hand pick them even with the on-demand presses like Google, which is self-publishing. And I think I forgot to tell you all that in the early days of spiritualism, when people were first writing books about the afterlife, many of them were self-published. I can't tell you how many books I've found in my archives of historical texts that were self-published by the authors. So this is nothing new in our area. And I would encourage you to, to self-publish. So thank you. Can we uh, go on to Joe now? Joe has been uh, doing some, some work in, in the field as well, and he has some enlightening things to tell us. Hey, everyone. Well, I kind of had an interesting uh, situation. I originally, about 10 years ago, went to a workshop seminar for Hay House to see how to get into the publishing, you know, one of the, a book that I was thinking about doing. And um, it was like a three-day workshop. And basically at the end, I was really kind of like bummed out because it was like you really need a platform and followers and, you know, you need a group behind you in order to usually get um, a traditional publisher's contract. <clears throat> Another thing they were looking for was things that were a different uh, niche than, than a lot of people who usually have. Um, I remember uh, the guy who runs it said to me or said to the whole group it was about a hundred of us um you know we got enough mediums so we don't need any mediums to write we got enough channelers we don't need that we got enough people to do angels we got dorian virtue so we don't need that and as he goes through each group i could see people in the audience just kind of like i hear the moans coming out and, and he's just kind of like cutting people off the at, at the legs it's a business it really is a business so when I had left there, I was kind of thinking like, well, you know something, uh, this just isn't going to work because, you know, he says, if you have something different and you want to publish it, you know, that we might be interested in something like that. So it crossed my mind afterwards in the next couple of days. And then it finally hit me. I was like, you know something, I'm going to write anyway and, and just see what happens because I have this information. I want to get it out. I said, I'm going to self-publish and I'm not going to hold back and change my whole genre and stuff to be able to fit into what a publisher wants. So I decided to just begin to write, which I did. And I wrote my first book. And that's one of my main points here for everyone. Write, write, and write. 
there's different ways, and, and Craig's going to go over and, and, and narrow go over it, different ways for publishing and getting the word out and stuff. But nothing's going to happen unless you've got it written down, unless you come up with a manuscript. So just always keep writing. We'll figure out the rest for you if we have to, you know. But that's the most important thing. Don't, don't uh, get discouraged. Just keep writing. So what happened is I pu self-published the first book with CreateSpace. And I learned a lot of information about publishing. And I learned a lot of information about marketing and platform and brand building. And that's your key right there. Because even if you do get a contract with a traditional publisher, they're going to want you to build your own platform. The days are over when they're going to send you on a, a you know, author's uh, uh, book signing across the country and stuff. Um, it's really, we've, we've gained more power through the self-publishing uh, business in the last 10 years, but we have to do a lot of the legwork, no matter what. So that's something you're going to have to teach yourself also. Now, by doing that, I happen to put myself in the right place at the right time because I had a major publishing company come to me after they had seen um, some of the interviews and some of the uh, found me online and some other ways she had mentioned that one of their acquisition editors from Adams Media contacted me, which is a major publishing house, and they had a project that they wanted me to work on. So what they did is they set up an interview and we sat down and see if we kind of fit for a particular project. And um, we decided that this might really work out. And what they would usually do is they ask you for um, writing samples, et cetera. Um, how would you set up a particular book on a particular, particular subject? Because with the traditional publishers, they're going to own the book. They own the rights to it. They drive the car. They make all the decisions. They may let you make some decisions. But otherwise, it's their baby. For that, they pay you. They'll pay you up front, maybe halfway through, and then when it gets published or three quarters of the way through, it depends. That's, you know, that all can be worked out in a contract. So I get to see the inside of how, you know, signing a contract and, and going through all those pieces are and what you have to give up and what you have to accept. The fact that they found me after I self-published is unusual, but it really proves the point of building your platform, getting your name out there, and doing the hard work, and that will get you where you want to go. At the minimum, it'll get you into the people that you're writing that book for. Because on the second hand, what you really want to do, if you know, besides getting discovered from a, a traditional uh, publishing house, you really want to be able to get in front of people that are going to get got what you're writing about, who you're trying to help. So that, you know, and then you're going to do that through networking and social media and websites and, you know, learning marketing, local and national things. I did over 60 radio interviews after I wrote my first book and, and that was self-published and I'm still collecting royalties on it uh, every month today. So it can be done. It just has to be done kind of in a real organized way. And uh, like I said, I went to create a uh, great uh, space through Amazon. And um, so we did the project with a traditional publisher and I had learned all the ins and outs. I remember writing to my uh, acquisition editor asking, uh, you know, do authors run through a love hate with their editors? And she wrote back to me, she goes, every one of them do, because they will take your words and they'll mix them around and they'll decide what they want on the cover and they'll decide what comes in, what comes out and what they'll chop off. And I remember I came in and that, uh, we were aiming for like 86,000 words or something. I think I came in at 92. And she says, actually we'll use 82. And um, so if you think you have a problem about writing, uh, writing enough words to get a, a full book, try cutting out 10,000 words of edited material that, you know, that's your baby. And it's like, where do I cut it out of? So that, those are the things you go through when you're dealing with a traditional publisher. On the other hand, traditional publisher will put your books in national bookstores, the actual physical book. They will do marketing for you to a certain extent. You're still going to have to do your own. Um, and it, it does open other doors for certain uh, publicity. So, that, you know, they, they both have their, their good and bad things about doing self or traditional. My third book, I went back to self-publishing because I like the control. I like um, the aspect of where I'm going with my work. Um, I'm going to have to do the, the publicity and the marketing myself anyway, 
So I might as well get a bigger piece of the pie, as, as Craig said, you get, you know, when you go through create space, you know, you're going to get more of the royalties and, um, and you, and you own, you know, you own the book rights. That means your audio, you can do audio. Um, you can sell your European rights if you want, you can do whatever you want. And maybe a traditional publisher will come along and pick up the rights to your book, or perhaps want you to do a, a, a series of books for them once they see you starting to build a platform. So my main advice is write, 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 do the self, um, self publishing, write a series of books and just keep working at it. It's not going to happen overnight, but just keep working at it. So over a period of time, you're going to build up a body of work. And then all of a sudden, when you start networking with people and organizations, they're going to say, this person knows what they're doing. They have a series of books. They have audio books. They might have tapes. They might have a, a video blog. And, and you can build off this, and then your platform starts to take off. So it's an organized way of building it up. And eventually, when you, you might get to the certain point where the, a traditional publisher might come to you and say, listen, you do have this platform now. You have national interviews. Um, we'll pick you up and we'll pay you, you know, a big giant check you know, to start you off with and things like that. But until then, do the self root, get your information out, because that's the main thing you want to do anyway, is get the information out to help people. That's the number one priority, you know? So do that and just keep building on it. Just keep building on it and building on it. And uh, hey, you do that for 10 or 20 years, you write a book every year or two, all of a sudden you're going to have a couple dozen books and uh, you're going to know a lot of stuff about the stuff you're writing about. You're going to be asked to give uh, talks about it. And you're going to end up helping a lot of people just because you put one foot in front of the other and you just kind of like just went through the stages and, and did what you had to do. And you didn't have to rely upon major organizations like traditional publishing that were really like controlling authors for hundreds of years, thousands of years, up to about 10 years ago. So um, that's my advice. Write, write, write. Do the self-publishing like Craig said. And, um, but then learn about building your platform, your marketing, your networking, um, the people you want to try to reach. That's the main thing. I mean, I do an author coaching program and that's basically what I teach is once you get all your stuff you know, ready and stuff, you keep control of your book, but you have to learn how to do the platform and things like that to take off, depending on how serious you want to get. But, uh, don't get discouraged. Just keep working at it. Keep writing. And uh, it's a whole new day. We have a lot more power as individual authors than we did 15 years ago or 20 years ago. They ran the whole ship. But now, uh, now we get a piece of the pie. So good luck with that. And hopefully we can answer some questions you guys might have later on. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's always help out there. You can always reach out to us to, uh, we'll give you uh, how we made our mistakes and how we can help you guys avoid them. Yeah, Joe, thank you. Uh, yeah, it's true. All of us.